Hey everyone, the video that you're about to watch was intended to be the 10th episode of my weight loss series, Watch Me Lose Weight. However, due to my depression at the time, I never got around to editing the video until now. Last year, every time I went fishing or crabbing, I would always feel very sad or lonely. And at the time, one of the movies that really stuck out to me was In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai. So I got the idea to make this short film based off some of the tropes that I saw in the movie. And it just ended up being a very heartfelt film that just highlighted my emotional state during one of the major turning points in my life. This film is intended to be watched in its entirety, so if you do not have enough time to watch it right now, or if you intend to skip around, then I would recommend not watching the movie right now. This film is dedicated to my ex, my friends, and all of my viewers, so thank you guys for watching. And without further ado, I present to you, In the Mood for Shirley. You see, 我秘密就會永遠都留在樖樹度。
Um, this is from last night. This is my, these are my 10 keepers. I never envisioned I would ever get my limit, especially because I'm very new to snaring. This is the biggest one I caught. It's like six, almost six and a half inches. Really big, really nice. It's so crazy. It is so crazy. Oh my God, check that out. Nice. So I bought myself a portable stove for like hot pot and stuff and um, five canisters of butane. Um, I'm gonna try it out. I built this little shelter here with these couple rocks so hopefully the wind has blown from this side. You just need a tiny little bit of water for steaming. Uh, you don't want to use too much ocean water anyway, because it might be dirty. But if, look, it's already boiling, so it saves gas. All right, last night I was a little up north from here. Can't really tell you the spot, because uh, got some good crabs there. But I caught this big boy right here. So. Alright, so these are from last night while I was walking around in the tide pools and like I said, I just cannot believe I see fully grown adult European green crabs. These are so invasive. Carcinus minus. And they're still alive. I kept them in my cooler. So not only are they okay, like amphibious, they can live in the air, but they can also withstand ice, icy temperatures. This is a male right here. As you can see and the other three are females I saw another one I just couldn't grab it um, and I didn't take my camera because I just didn't think that I would actually see anything cool but wow these definitely cannot be returned to the wild and yeah European green crab Carcinus minus wow incredible wow so <clears throat> this is not really a tide pool, but you can treat it like one. It is salt water after all. Um, the only thing is it's a bay, and it doesn't experience waves, but it does experience tides, and it has a lot of the same animals. For example, this place has a lot of big striped shark crabs. Put them right in there. Big striped shark crabs. Apologies for the focusing issue. I saw another one earlier. But, I mean, it has a, a lot of the same organisms, you know, like striped shore crabs, those barnacles. Those are definitely a balanus variety. You can tell they're balanus because if you look closely, the diamond shaped opening. Opening's diamond shaped. There's some piece of bull kelp. Bull kelp. Alright. Um, I'm sure there's like some limpets around. Oh, yes. There's a limpet. What kind of limpet is that? Not even sure. I'm gonna have to get a picture of that. That's cool. It's pretty tall. So there's also um, rock crabs here and you, sea stars. There's actually not not too few sea stars here, like okra sea stars. 
So I see them at night sometimes. Surprisingly, I think this place is um, better at night. Well, I, I guess a lot of places are better at night. Another big strip shirt guy, that's a big one. But uh, the thing is, at night you get limited visibility. But this place is so kind of boring that the limited visibility doesn't like reduce much from the daytime, which is already not that great. <laughs> That's funny. I saw some big striped shore crabs again over here. You hear them too. Oh, there's a big one. Yeah, a lot of striped shore crabs. There's yellow shore crabs here in the mud. If you flip some rocks, you should be able to find some hemigrapsis organensis too. And let me tell you, I still find it crazy that I found European green crabs here, Carcinus manus. Um, they're quite abundant at night. You know, the striped shore crabs are out at night again, but there's, there's, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of European green crabs around at night. I, I caught like four the other night. and. It's just kind of scary to think that they, they really do have an established population here. I don't know why they prefer the bay instead of like the ocean because I know on the east coast they're just rampant on the tide, regular tide pools, not just the bay. But, whoa, excuse me. <laughs> huh, nice seat. Okay. But yeah, look, I just find it so crazy that they're just walking around and, you know, there's just plenty of them. Uh, like, I bet I can come here and find some molts, you know, that'd be cool. But, yeah, green crabs, nasty, nasty critter. They're a type of swimming crab. And then you can see the last, it's usually flattened, but this one is just barely flattened. It has a little bit extra CD on it. Yep. If you find these, don't return them back to the water. Kill them. I think I might eat it. <laughs> that might be the biggest striped shrimp crab I've ever seen. See if I can catch it. Oh, jeez, I got it. Oh my goodness, it's huge. Oh my goodness. This has got to be the biggest structural crab I've ever seen. That makes sense. This place is crawling with striped shore crabs. If I wanted to find the big one, it's got to be here. But look at the size of those claws. I think these are longer than an inch. I remember an inch used to be like big, big claws. Dang. All right, saying goodbye to the possibly the biggest striped shore crab I've ever seen. This one's huge. Whoa, it's huge. There it goes. Here's something that's cool. Look, all those little barnacles are feeding. See their little feet scraping by? That is super cool. Look at that. and cook. Mm. Alright guys, so today um, I want to tell you guys a little sad story, but it just fits the moment right now, so I think now's a good time to talk about it. So in the past year, a little over a year, 15 months, I've been in love with this girl, and um, she loved me too, but you know, from the very beginning, I kind of thought that we were pretty incompatible. But she just was always in good spirits and always wanted to try to make things work, you know. And it just, it's just so sad that I only realize this now, but I, I could, I could tell you for sure that I was being stubborn most of the time and I wasn't making many of the changes I should have made. 
there are a lot of things that I thought that she should change, and she actually thought about those things. Um, but I think as time went on, I was, was so stubborn that I didn't make those changes in time. I just couldn't get myself to do it, and I can literally feel myself hurting her. You know, it's not enough to just know you're doing something. It's kind of like when you're doing something and something's happening and you could tell it's happening. Like, you could just feel that that thing is happening. And the thing I felt was I was hurting. It was so sad. Um, so, anyways, for in two weeks ago exactly, today is March 22nd, uh, she stops texting me. I sent her about four texts, and I sent her a picture of her favorite food. I didn't get any response, and I was just, I was getting kind of worried, I was sad, but at the same time, you know, I knew she was busy, so I didn't push her too much, but after about ten days, I just started thinking, you know, maybe if she's really not into me anymore, maybe I should just break up with her. Because I'm coming to San Francisco, it's here right now, and I was thinking maybe I should just break up. But she hasn't talked to me for 10 days. It's crazy. Well, just a few days ago, f three or four days ago, she calls me. That's surprising. And lo and behold, she says we should break up. It was one of the saddest conversations I ever had with her on the phone. She was nice enough to talk to me for an hour or two, but, you know, it was just so sad. I felt like that would be our last phone call. Um, probably will be. And I was just thinking all the things I did wrong. And it's just, not only is it sad that we had to end a relationship, it's also sad that I didn't realize how, you know, unfair or bad I was until it's too late, you know, I guess that's how it always happens, you just don't realize what you have. Like, I can think of so many ways it could have been better, and because there are all those things that I didn't do, then it's accurate to say that, you know, a lot of the fault was mine. And it's just really is so sad thinking about this because she was so nice and cheerful, always happy made people around her happy. I make people around me sad. And she just had a lot of good values. Um, but in the end, we just, or I just couldn't make it work or something, I don't know. It's crazy. So anyways, here I'm alone at Bolinas eating crab and telling you guys about this sad story. I wanted to make this video yesterday, but while I was here, I ran into quite a bit of trouble, and I don't want to talk about it, but let's just say that I paid 1000 over $1,000 last night, and I'm probably going to owe more later. Um, oh my god, it was it's crazy how expensive things are over here, but um, it was purely an accident. It really sucks. It is what it is. I've been pretty depressed about this. So I'm sharing it with you guys. It was just so sad because it was so abrupt. I mean, there are still things that I wanted to do with her. Like, I wanted to go see some movies, or I wanted to go to this place with her. I wanted her to try out this food. It's just, well, we can't do those anymore. When I was here yesterday, I thought about her the whole time because when I go crabbing, you know, most of it's a waiting thing. It's so, so sad. I was thinking about her the whole time. And I, I cried for a good like five minutes or so. It was so sad. But it's a new day now, and I gotta move forward. So I wanted to tell you guys something. 
I'll ask if you guys know. You guys know what people used to do when they had a secret? They would go up into the mountains, dig a hole in the wall, and whisper their secret into the hole. They would then cover it with mud and leave it forever. 